Now, uh, this is a review of what I was doing on antimicrobial uh, resistance. And the whole story behind this, I'll, I'll just kind of tell you this before we break for lunch. But, but the antibiotic resistance largely developed because of the poultry industry. And, and what was discovered after they started using antibiotics in, you know, penicillin was discovered, they, they discovered it in 1928, Alexander Fleming. But it wasn't until about 1940 that they got it commercialized and they started using it. Okay, so in the process of this, one of the companies, it was a pharmaceutical company that also owned a poultry business, they had some leftover grain residues from the, from the growth of these organisms. And so one of the scientists says, I'm just going to take some of that stuff there. I'm going to put it in my chicken feed. Then he started hatching eggs. Well, what he found was that the eggs, the pulse that come out of these eggs, were twice the size of the normal pulp. They weighed twice as much. And he goes, holy cow. What have I got here? Well, as they started playing with this, what they learned is if they could administer submedicinal or sub-therapeutic doses of antibiotics to, to birds, what it did is it came into the gut and it altered certain balances. And the chickens would grow faster. So this wasn't the egg industry that was doing this. This was the broiler industry. They could put on meat twice as fast. And they go, whoa, this is great. And when they started doing this, some of the scientists said, you know, antibiotics are, are a tool. But, they, but I don't think we are using them the right way. And right off the bat, some of these guys, very brilliant guys, says, I think we're going to teach these microbes how to learn to be resistant to this. I mean, if we don't come in and just kill them, we're going to teach these guys how to work around us. And that's exactly what happened here, is when, when we start going through this, these reports, because I was doing the chicken stuff, and that's why I don't have my chicken stuff done yet, Ed. I've been working on it since last fall, and I keep reading stuff, and I go, man, that is so good, I got to put that in there, I got to put that in there. So, that it suggests that antibiotic use creates this anaerobic micro resistance, antibiotic micro resistance to, uh, to our microorganisms and uh, pathogens such as E. coli. Okay, and, the, and these studies show up here. Some of them we have 100% resistance on certain species. E. coli, we just take the different types of antibiotics and say, okay, where are they on the resistance scale? Okay? And so some of them are just getting started. Some of them are vastly growing. And, as, and, and so initially in the poultry industry, the antibiotics used were, were just to promote growth. They were never as an antibiotic. They were never trying to cure a disease. They didn't have them. But as we got into, as that industry exploded and, and tried and has now surpassed meat and, or pork and beef, is they have used the antibiotics to deal with disease and not growth anymore. Okay, they, they've got better feed, they've got better nutrition, they've got better breeding, and so the antibiotics don't play a role in the growth promoting anymore. They play a role in disease control. I remember the time we fed hogs, we'd, we'd put antibiotic in as a growth promote, and it, it worked. It did, because what it did was it altered gut groups, and so like when you get into certain types of, of microbes in the gut, some produce these compounds, some produce these compounds, and if you increase that population, you get better growth rate. 
Okay, so they were actually still selecting biology groups in the gut with it. That was the mechanism. They stumbled onto it. And so glyphosate, as we talked about, is an antimicrobial with a different twist. It is very effective against the good guys. It stimulates the bad guys. Okay, this disrupts the whole system here. As we go through here, we control the bad guys by outcompeting the pathogens with beneficials. These are probiotic trace minerals, and that is the way you, you run these systems. Okay, so right now, this is current, 23,000, uh, and so th this is really a fascinating story of how all this cool stuff migrated. As, as these guys put these antibiotics out there as these growth promoters, I mean, it worked really well. And then the scientists that were even part of some of these original studies started noticing that it wouldn't kill certain organisms anymore. And it wasn't until into the 60s that they realized that through the antibiotics they were putting in the poultry baths when they were killing them in the slaughterhouses, the workers were getting infected and, and they thought, well, if we put antibiotics on the meat, it'll last for a month in the fridge and it'll never spoil. And so people were getting loads and loads and loads of antibiotics. When the antibiotics first got discovered, we were putting it in lotions and face creams and makeup. I mean, it was like, wow, this is so cool, we'll never ever get sick. And so we got exposed to a lot of these antibiotics. But what happened was, is we trained a lot of microbes out there, E. coli, salmonella, streph, staph, you know, where MRSA came from, they became antibiotic resistant. And now they don't respond to antibiotics. And what they figured out was, and it took till 1965 until they figured this out. And it was a Japanese researcher by the name of uh, Wanabe that figured out that when a bacteria died, part of it snippet gene could be reabsorbed by another bacteria and that bacteria having never experienced penicillin, tetramycin, erythromycin had the resistance. So it was spreading from microorganism to microorganism not from the actual experience. So they were having all of these outbreaks pop up where there was never any poultry industry, never any connection to the actual use of antibiotics. And that's when they figured out, uh-oh, it's in the biology chain now. So it can go anywhere and it can go everywhere. And so that's kind of how our, anti, our antibiotic microbial resistance started, was out of this low dose growth promoter type thing. And so now what we have, and this picture only gets a little worse every year, but we, 23,000 Americans die from this every year. That's 63 a day. So while we've been here this morning, we've lost about 30 people somewhere from antibiotic resistance. 25,000 Europeans die from this. 63,000 infant deaths right now a year in India. Two million Americans get to go to the doctor or hospital. Four, 48 million Americans get foodborne diseases every year. Some of these from our good friend pathogens. 700,000 die globally. We're pushing, if we keep going in a few years, we'll be at a million. By 2050, we'll be about this much in global cost as a result and 10 million deaths. So we're kind of headed in a tough direction from this. We began using antibiotics in the 40s. Within five years, we had gone to 500,000 pounds. Currently now we use 30 million pounds in, in antibiotic feed and livestock today. Uh, this is in the US, this is globally. Uh, livestock sector uses four to five times more antibiotics than the humans do. Right now, Americans eat 91 pounds of chicken per person. That means a little guy to a big guy, okay? That's more than pork, that's more than beef, okay? Chicken is the number one. Okay, 9 billion chickens produced, 1.4 billion of them are in Georgia, okay? It's kind of interesting thing here on 
the poultry industry and I know you guys don't do the broiler so much you're doing the you're doing the eggs but but this stuff's out there so just a little education a little wife for your information